The first sun had risen to its peak, and his rays were beating down on the desert world of Borahome. On the outskirts of the major city was a group of homes made in the traditional style, with several fields green in defiance of the surrounding arid conditions. The air was still chilled, and the streets empty of the native peoples, though the daily sunning was due to come soon after they had something to digest. Cezeth had finished the morning work and sat down in front of his terminal to access his mail. A small basket of critchlins were warming, though the cool air tempered his hunger. He would be happy to have them once he found a good rock in the sun. His claws clicked against the terminal as he typed out a few responses. As he finished up, another message pinged in. Who could be sending a message so soon before sunning? He wondered as he opened the notification. Lad, why don't you join me for lunch? We can share my black rock and eat together. Bring some Krishlins, I know Scarra made you some. Lajron lost his clutch. Cezette's thrill fluttered in amusement. His grandfather always had his ear hole to the ground and tongue in the air for Krishlins. He extracted the basket and accompanying water bag from the oven and inserted the bag into a pack he would wear to stay warm. He strapped skates to his feet and claws, then took off to his grandfather's home. The ease of transitioning between bipedal and quadrupedal stances enabled his kind to utilize skates and use their tails to help navigate. It was fast and efficient on the smooth roads. Cezef was a little early, though the occasional neighbor would wave as he made his way for the neighborhood. His grandfather lived nearby in a house unlike any other Cezef had ever seen. Metallic walls and built-in conveniences were located throughout, though. He had only ever been allowed into the den in the spare room. He found Lajon heading outside towards his preferred rock. It was large and wide, with a central column perfect for placing food. Most of the surface was smooth, though the sides of the column were perfectly rough for scraping off loose scales. It was likely worth a fortune if anyone could figure out how to move it. Hail, Cezef. Hail, Lajron, Cezef responded in the traditional greeting. Cezef took the food from Lajron and brought it to the Sunning Stone. Laying out, he noted the Turax, a small rodent, stuffed with some mushrooms. Lazarin always had the best food. With the food laid out and everything else stowed away, he felt the cold start to slow him down. Cezef returned to check on the old lizard, so that they might eat quickly before sunning. Lazarin was slowly climbing the cutout stairs and took Cezef's claw to finish the short climb. Ah, oh, good, you brought the Krishlins, Lazarin cried out when he saw the spread. You greedy devil, you are only going to eat those. Not even share with your poor grandfather who's too slow to catch them these days. Cezef rolled his eyes. You're faster than you look. Hrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
It was that sudden, though. I'm one of the few who remember the cataclysm, not the last, but likely close. He so he blinked his third eyelid, a demonstration of emotion rare for him. We ascended, but had little to do with the mountain being destroyed. We didn't live on that mountain and generally stayed away. Lacheron stated this, despite the contradiction to the lesson Sazef had been taught all his life. Sazef held his tongue despite that, and the old lizard continued. In my day, we were hunter-gatherers like the rest of the tribes. We didn't have metal, plastic, or electricity. We were simple people. Life was hard sometimes, and easier at others. But something changed all of that when I was only ten cycles old. Lajron stood and signaled Sazef to do the same. Come, it'll be easier to show you. Lajron started back towards his house as Sazef gathered their items and followed him inside. This house was not built by us, Lajron said. He gestured around. Have you ever seen construction with similar styles of materials? Why are the seats so uncomfortable? Sazef, having put away their dishes and baskets, took time to look around. Some of the commonly used items were similar to those in all homes, but others were distinctly different. It's certainly unique, Grandfather. Lajron pulled open a sliding door that Sazef had not been behind. Come, follow, he instructed. As Sazef ended, he could tell this area was rarely used. There was a strange stone beneath his feet, and the walls were dully metallic. Boxes which had been placed long ago were covered in a thin layer of dust. They were made of some plastic unlike he had seen before. I place these here when I cleared our room to live in, Lajon indicated. The two lizards approached a staircase which went up and down. Lajon turned on the torch as they went further into the darkness, calling out any obstacles they approached. The Zeph was so distracted by the amount of metal oddities they passed that he still bumped into some. After descending two levels, Lajon instructed, Help me open this door. It was the same sort of metal as the rest of the building, and had letters that spelled a word he had never seen before. They grabbed the handle and pulled the heavy door to the side, and Lajron popped it open with a piece of metal he had picked up. Take care now, boy. This is a sacred place, Lajron said, as Azef nodded. Lajron switched the torch to Lambo, and the room was more illuminated. Chairs and workstations were arranged towards the large screen. There was enough room for six to seven people to sit comfortably, though the chairs were of a weird design, upright with our niches. Listen and let me finish, Lajron said sharply. Taking Sazeev's stupefied silence as consent, he started. The cataclysm wasn't a natural event. This structure is part of a larger ship which crashed into the Great Mountain, destroying it and initiating the cataclysm. What's a ship? Sazeev asked. I am not so sure myself. It was a vehicle of some sort which could travel through the air and into the void. Lajron answered, then waited for any follow-up as Sazeev just nodded. There were no survivors. One was a man who claimed to come from another world. He looked... weird. No claws, no thrill. No scales, but he was warm. The other was his spirit companion. Well, she wasn't a spirit, but seemed that way. Anyways, I've gone on a while. Lajon trailed off. The Zef looked at his grandfather. I don't know what to say. This seems like a black tale. It's outrageous. Why would they teach us false things? But also, we are standing in something unlike anything I've ever seen. I don't know what to think. That's all right, lad, Lajon interjected. There's something more. We finally have enough power generation to turn this thing on. It ran out of power long ago, though it's only been asleep. Before that, though, I want you to take a book and read it. It's a journal of the man who landed here, along with our records of the event. I also have some files that will accompany it. Lajron pulled out a thick tome and a hard drive. Read and watch. It is the story of Dave Little and our history. Zazef accepted the items. When should I... You have been excused from work. The council knows. Let's go now. The two lizards walked back up to sunlight in silence. Once up top, they wished each other farewell, and Sazef promised to return in two days. Lajon watched him walk off towards home. Soon, Sophia. I'll see you soon.